Okay, so, so I want to begin this new project using the dimensions that we've got here uh, to set out uh, this building uh, on this narrow site. And uh, so beginning with the property dimensions or the property boundary, we can then set out the walls from that, um, from that boundary uh, to establish the plan dimensions. But then just as importantly, set up the levels to establish our heights, again, working from that uh, property boundary. So we're actually going to begin maybe with a tool that you might not have used very much uh, because it's one of the site tools. Um, so I'll firstly begin a new file. So as always, we're going to start with the architectural template. Under projects, you can just click there on architectural template or on the file menu, choose the uh, sub-menu under new and then project and then from the list here you can choose architectural template. It does the same thing. If you choose browse, just in case you're coming into it in a different way, uh, the architectural template is actually this one here. So it's called default of ENU. So ENU is one of those funny things you, you see come up with a lot of Autodesk files, it just means end user. So if you see ENU on your file, that's all it means. So it's default, Oz is Australia, so Australian end user. So it's a template set up for Australia. There's one there next to it called default, Oz ENU loaded, which is actually the same template with a few extra things. So that, that could be useful, but again, this is the one we're going to use, default, Oz ENU. But again, from the list here, architectural template does the same thing. So you need to make sure you are confident and you know which template you should begin with. Later you'll see that you can save your own templates and store a lot of those standard settings uh, to begin your own file. So then moving on to the, um, the property boundary, which is where we're going to begin, it's usually best to draw that in the site floor plan. So I've under floor plans changed to site. And then you find the property boundary tool uh, or property line tool under massing and site. And then you'll see over on the right there you've got property line. So I'm going to choose that. And you'll see it'll ask which option from these two do you want to use to create your property line or your boundary. The option you should always, always use in Australia, or any country except for a few, is the bottom one, create by sketching. I know you might be tempted if you've got some experience, you might think, well, I've got the bearings, why can't I use those? Here you see it says distances and bearings. The problem is, the way that you enter bearings, in, uh, in most cases, is going to be different to what Revit requires. So you can't use bearings even if you have them, unfortunately. So you need to always use this option at the bottom. Create by sketching, really important. Okay, so then uh, you've got the boundary dimensions on the sheet there. Right, so the overall dimension here running along the top, 20510 is the length. And then the width is... 3750. Okay, so I'm simply going to click a point uh, that is maybe just above my section line and then take it over to the right and type in 20510. Enter. Then I'm going to come down 90 degrees and type in the width which is 3750, enter, and then coming back to the left, you'll see it'll give me a point to show me when they're aligned. And so I'm just going to choose that by clicking, and then coming up I can close that shape. Okay, so after you've finished it, you can always cancel, and then select all of those lines, and then maybe use the arrows on the keyboard, to just nudge that so that it's centred by eye over this survey base point in the middle. 
That'll just make it easier for you. If it's centered in, in the view, when you're working on the building later, it's much easier, of course, if it's all centered. So that's it. That's my property down here done. So I'm going to click tick to finish. And you can see it gives me this nicely formatted line for the boundary. So that's, that's a great thing. And now, I'm going to use another tool that you may not have used before. Uh, I think we touched on it, but I'm not sure if we went that far with it. Topo sets. Have you used that one before? No. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so topo surface, if you haven't used it, it lets you create a ground surface, essentially. So if you look at the drawings here, you can see we've got, I've left the ground patch in even, so that you can see that's the ground line, and below it is the ground patch. So that's our ground surface. And here it is again, you can see that heavy line, which is the ground. Now, have any of you been up to have a look at this building recently? Uh, or ever? Yep, 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 it wouldn't have changed. So, is the ground like that? No. no, definitely not. Okay, so it's sloping, but it's sloping either side. So, within the boundary, it is actually pretty flat. But you need to know that it is sloping. Later, you can put the slope in, but for now, we're just going to model it the way it is on the site and make it flat. So long as long as you know that you can easily slope the surface later, then for now, you can just go to the topo surface tool. Again, under massing and site, click topo surface. Leave the elevation there at zero. So make sure you realize that's where you put in the height. But we're leaving it at zero. Notice it's got pick uh, or place point chosen already. So I'm gonna leave that as well. If you click on some other button, you just need to click place point again. And then I'm going to choose four points outside this property boundary. So I want my, my ground surface to be bigger than the boundary, rather than the same size. Okay, so I'll just click it out by eye and just click one, two, three, four points. That's it. So I'll finish that. And I'm going to show you then, if I go to a 3D view, clicking on the little house icon, of course, to make a default 3D view, I've got a surface. If I go to shaded, you'll see that's my ground surface. But we can't see the boundary there. That's normal. If I go to the ground floor plan, I can see the boundary, but not the surface. Again, that's normal, that's fine. So in the site view, I can see both of those things. And if I go and have a look at maybe a section view, we can see there's the ground surface being cut. So that gives us a nice heavy line for the top and a ground patch to show us it's been cut. But if I go to an elevation view, we won't see that. We can see the surface, that's it there, but it's not being cut in this elevation view yet. So that's something we'll do later. But when you make something like this, it's good to have a look at it in these different views and realize what you can see in each of those views. Sorry? Exactly, exactly, that's right, yeah. Okay, so I'll give you a chance to do that and then we can have a look at setting out the building.